welcome to another fix it friday video today i'm going to show you an easy mending project for a torn seam on this case it's going to be on a tote i'm joining you from the library which is located in tree six territory in the traditional homeland the metis and of course because i'm in the library i was able to take over a meeting room all to myself so since i'm alone i'm going to take my mask off for the rest of the video and I will show you what I would do to fix this, this seam here. Now, I'm really new to mending and that's kind of why I love this whole idea is that it is really easy. Even if you're new to it, you can do it. So since I'm going to do um, a visible mending technique, I'm going to use a nice bright color to fix this tote. If you wanted to do something really subtle, you could use really thin black thread to match the edging here. Um, but I wanted to show that I've fixed the bag. So to have a bit of fun, I'm gonna pick this red thread because it makes me think of the Saskatoon Public Library logo and it kind of matches the red on the bag. So I think it'll look really nice. And this is just uh, embroidery floss or thread. So I'm just gonna cut a length of that with some fabric scissors or regular scissors. And I'm gonna thread it in my needle. You could um, do this with a double thread if you want or single, depends what your preference is. So if you're doing a double thread, you would take your two ends and knot them right here while they're in equal distance. When you're using embroidery thread, you can get away with one knot with this because it's nice and thick. Just like that. Now I have a nice double piece of thread that is knotted at the end. So I'm gonna tip the camera so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. This is gonna be a very fast repair. So after I'm done, I'll show you a few other of my colleagues and I'll tell you some fun facts about mending and show you some resources. But first let's get on with this. So I have my double piece of thread here knotted at the end and I'm going to try and look back here and see where do these stitches start to pull out. So we can see this part's all split and I'm going to start sewing a bit further back. So what's tricky about this one is just trying to make sure that you have that black um, seam part covered over all the way and you're getting both layers of gray here both of these and the black over top each time you go so to begin I'm going to try and stick my needle under the black and just get the black and that's just so I can hide the knot at the end so now that knot is once I cut off the ends you won't see the little knot um, otherwise, we're going for a visible mend, so I'm going to do nice wide stitches right over. And all I'm really worrying about isn't, I'm not worrying about spacing or, you know, design or anything. I'm, I'm just worried about durability and will this product, this item be usable again? Because that's, that's the whole point of visible mending is can you make something personalized, um, beautiful, sure, but at the end, the top main priority is always can you make it usable again? So you could play around and try to do a special pattern or you can just, you know, go fast or do whatever you like. And if it's not perfect, that's totally fine. As long as you're getting both ends though, through both ends of the black and the gray, you know you're doing a nice durable job. So while I finish stitching this edge up, I'll let, uh, I'll let my screen pop over here and you can visit with Dawn as she talks about some of the resources and uh, with Crispy and she can tell you a few fun facts. 
I'd like to share a resource today on making low sew or no sew totes. Perhaps you have a tote that can't be repaired. Natasha's doing a great job at repairing one today, but perhaps yours is beyond that point. And so there are lots of options for you to make a new tote with things that you have around your home. None of the books that I was interested in getting were in the library today. And so I put a hold on some that were from out of town in the province. And how you do that is you go to the Saskatoon Public Library website and you can search for the item that you would like. I searched totes and then you select the item that you'd like. Now you can click um, on locations to see where those items are and then place a hold. And when you get to the place a hold screen, it will ask you for your library card number and your PIN number, which is generally the last four digits of your phone number. And then it will ask you what location you would like that uh, book or item to be delivered to. And so you can choose where you would like it to go. And once that item arrives, you'll get an email and it will be held for you on the hold shelf. And then you can pop into your local library and pick it up. The book I'd like to share with you today is called Simply Sublime Bags, 30 No So Low So Projects, and it's written by Jody Kahn. And this book was actually shipped to me today to Saskatoon from the Wapiti Regional Library. Um, it's got a whole section in here on totes. It's got all sorts of other bags as well that you can make, um, but I'll share with you my favorites today. This one is made with a pillowcase, which I think is super cool, something that you might have around your house. and. This is my ultimate favorite, made with shower curtain. Who doesn't need a bag that's waterproof, right? To go to the beach or the pool in summer. Perfect project. Did you know the tote bags come from very humble beginnings? They are now an important accessory in the portfolio of most designer brands, but the etymology of the word tote is to carry and can be traced back to the 17th century. However, the tote bag has been an essential part of fashion history ever since people had something precious they needed to carry around. The first tote bags were worn around the waist, a bum bag or fanny pack. Although they had a practical use, they could be embellished with threads and jewels and be a sign of your status. So to Take a look at your tote and see how important you feel in comparison today. So as we get to the end, if you have used a safety pin, uh, you can just go ahead and pull that out and continue. And you can see already our seam is coming together really nicely. We're already almost done. This bag will live to carry books again another day. That's the best kind of tote. A tote full of books. I can tell I'm getting back over to where the stitches um, are still in because it's getting a bit hard to poke through. So I'll go a bit further just to get past the open seam and back onto the machine stitched portion. If you're having a lot of trouble getting your needle through, you could always use a pair of pliers and actually clamp it onto the needle and push and then clamp and pull it. Or if you just find it's, it makes your fingers sore, that's another option. Sometimes it's a bit easier for these thicker parts. I think I'll do two or three more. And then to finish off, I always just leave a big loop like this, and then I stick my needle back through it and pull it, and it just knots itself right there. If you've got enough thread, you can do that more than once, 
or you can even just sew back into it. So let's see if I left myself enough to do it twice so it's pretty tight. I think I'll just be able to do it. one last one in there. I'm just kind of pull it back with my nail a little bit more and then this is ready to trim and the other end is ready to trim and now here is our repair job. So that was pretty easy to do. It's still a visible mend. It blends in with the bag because it's the red. And now this bag is ready to hold books again. And look at the inside. Here, you can't even tell on the inside at all. really strong especially with the double thread so that's how easy it is to repair a split seam on a tote bag especially one that has a little cover like that even if it didn't the thread itself would probably be thick enough uh, and if you have any bigger tears you could always use a patch or maybe some no sew um, adhesive there's lots of different options so never feel intimidated by a repair job a lot of them are really easy and there's many different techniques you can use Thank you for joining us for Fix It Friday. Hopefully this is something you can try at home. Have a great day. See you next time.